Welcome back Technobees, my name is Don. If you're starting to build your smart homes, you'll notice that most of the smart switches out there require the neutral wire. If you're like me who lives in an old house with only two wires, this would be a problem. Today we're gonna take a look at the Lasco smart switch, a non-neutral smart switch. Is this a viable option? Let's go! Tech newbies. This video is not sponsored. I bought this unit with my own money, so no bias here. The items came in the usual blue Lazada packaging. It's quite assuring that the items were completely bubble wrapped to protect it during transit. I bought the Switch and the Zigbee Hub since this will be my first Zigbee device. By the way, both of these items were made locally here in the Philippines. The Switch has its own Lasco app, but it's also supported by Smart Life app. It supports Alexa, Google Home, Google Assistant, Tuya app, and Siri shortcut, plus Wi-Fi via the Zigbee Hub. Opening this box, you are greeted by the manual that no one ever reads. Then we have the switch itself, screws for mounting, and a capacitor if you encounter flickering. As this is a non-neutral device, the connections just require the live wire and the load, a simple two connection operation. Now let's take a look at the Zigbee Hub. Opening the box, you again are greeted by the manual that no one ever reads, and the hub which is enclosed in the usual plastic wrap. There is a mode set button, micro USB port. Other items included are the USB cable and the adapter. Now it's time to install the switch. Warning, if you are not sure or confident of your electrical skills, please ask a professional to do this for you. This is 220 to 240 volts and could kill you if you happen to get in contact with the live wire. After switching off our breaker and confirming that there is no power in the switch, I removed the cover plate. Then I removed the old switch by unscrewing the two screws that hold it on the junction box. After this, I turned the breaker on again to test and identify which of the leads is the load and the live wire using a non-contact voltage tester. I then took a picture to remember which wire is which. I turned the breaker back off and proceeded to remove the switch. Before installing the new switch, I had to trim the leads to shorten them up. I cut the leads to just the length needed to go through the switch terminals. I then inserted the live wire I identified earlier to the live terminal of the switch and tightened the screw. And do the same for the load wire to the load terminal of the switch and also tighten the screw. After this, I switch the breaker back on so I can test if the switch works before I mount it on the junction box. Once I have confirmed that it was working, I switch the breaker back off so I can safely mount the switch on the junction box. Since our house is quite old, the junction box we have is made of metal. I had to wrap the terminals with electrical tape to ensure that there will be no electrical short when the switch is mounted to the junction box which was a tight fit. The mounting part was the tricky part. I had to reinsert some of the wire to the tube that holds the junction box so that the switch would fit in the junction box. Then I fixed the switch to the junction box using the provided two screws. After that, I snapped in the cover plate and turned the breaker back on. Now let us set up the Zigbee hub. Plug the hub to the outlet and make sure that it is in pairing mode with the red light blinking fast. If not, press and hold the button for a few seconds to put it in pairing mode. If you haven't done so, download, install, and register to the Smart Life app. Enable Bluetooth and location on your device. Then open the app and click the plus sign on the upper right corner. Select Gateway Control on the left pane, then select Wireless Gateway Zigbee from the list of gateways. Enter your network SSID and password, then click Next. Tick on the confirm the indicator is blinking rapidly and click Next. 
then wait for the pairing process to complete. Once completed, you can choose to enter the name of your gateway or click done to complete the adding of your hub. Now let's set up the switch. Enter the switch pairing mode by pressing and holding the switch button for a few seconds. The fast blinking of the LED indicator on the switch confirms that it is now in pairing mode. Open the Smart Life app and click on the plus sign on the upper right corner. Select lighting from the left pane and scroll down on the list and select Panel Light Zigbee. Select the gateway we just set up earlier. Tick on the confirm that the light is blinking rapidly and click Next. Then wait for the pairing to complete. After this, you can now rename your device. Click Save and click Done. Now let's take a short walkthrough of the app. Clicking on the pen icon at the upper right hand corner. Clicking on the same pen icon again. You have three options. First, the icon which allows you to customize the switch icon by either taking a photo or selecting a pic from your album. Clicking on the name allows you to rename the switch. And clicking on the location allows you to select the location in your house where the switch is installed. Selecting multi-control association allows the switch to control other devices that are compatible, say another switch or another light. In Share Device, you can send an invite via email to allow a family member to control a particular switch on the app using their own Smart Life account. You can also create a group for multiple devices by clicking on Create Group. Clicking on the timer at the lower left corner allows you to set a schedule to turn the switch on or off at a specified time. Clicking on the Countdown tab allows you to set a countdown timer to automatically turn off the switch. Clicking on the settings on the lower right corner, you have these two items. Relay status lets you change the relay position. And indicate light allows you to configure how the LED light on the switch would behave depending on the relay state. Going back to the included capacitor, you may or may not need to install it depending on what LED bulb you have. If you experience flickering, you can either install the included capacitor or change the LED bulb wattage. I have tried different wattages of LED bulb to see which wattage wouldn't require the capacitor to be installed. Based on my test, a 9 watt LED bulb does not flicker even without the capacitor installed. Overall, I really like this product. It did what it's supposed to do and gives you a bit of flexibility in automating your home. You can also integrate this with Google Home or Alexa for voice control. I liked it very much that I've installed another one on my daughter's bedroom. I am now planning to change most of our switches to this one. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Keep safe. Peace.